Time now for our Medical Monday segment and the latest on the COVID-19 vaccines. Joining us now is Dr. Stacy Valendra with Stanford Healthcare. Good to see you. First, what is the status of the AstraZeneca vaccine? Could it be approved here in the U.S. anytime soon? Based on the latest updates, it looks like the, the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is approaching its final stages of clinical trials in the U.S. So they're waiting on the results. They'll probably be available in the next few weeks. And then once that data has been collected and analyzed, then they'll be able to apply to the FDA for approval. Of course, it's already been approved in the UK, but every country has its own drug approval process. So we'll have, they'll have to do it in the US before it can be delivered here. And so I think overall, we're probably on the verge of having this vaccine available if things go well, probably in the next month or two. And we know the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is one dose and doesn't require that ultra cold storage. Does it have any other benefits over Pfizer and Moderna? You know, I think the most obvious benefit is that we now have three vaccines available that are all effective and safe. So this is going to increase overall availability um, so that we get it to more people sooner. Of course, the, um, the, refrigeration, camp, the refrigeration is really important. Uh, we've had reports with the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines that, that vaccines have degraded and so that they have not been able to be used. Um, but with this other, so, so th those two vaccines require deep refrigeration, um, but the, uh, the J&J vaccine only requires regular refrigeration. So that just makes the whole supply chain much, much simpler. And then of course, requiring one vaccine instead of two also simplifies the whole distribution process. You only have to go through that process once, um, which is much quicker than you know, keeping track of the same people to have them go through it a second time. And the clinical trials show Johnson Johnson's efficacy rate is lower than Pfizer and Moderna's. What would you say to people who might prefer getting one vaccine over another? You know, those numbers are interesting. Uh, the most important thing to understand is all three of that, these vaccines are safe and highly effective at preventing, preventing the thing that matters most, which is serious illness and death. And so everybody's, you know, the whole medical community is on, on board with that. Uh, of course, the lower effectiveness rates of the J&J &J vaccine reported at 66% versus Pfizer and Moderna was more like 94, 95%. Uh, we think it has to do with where it was studied. So uh, the 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 J and J vaccine was studied in South Africa. They were dealing with new variants um, and other countries that were dealing with new variants. Also, where you are in the pandemic itself, so how prevalent it is in the population, is also going to affect those numbers. Uh, so the most important thing is to schedule your vaccine appointment when your age group or your your category opens up, um, and not to worry too much about the vaccine that you're receiving. And we've reported on the mRNA technology used by the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. How does the J&J &J vaccine work? The J&J &J vaccine is a little bit different than the Pfizer and Moderna uh, vaccines. So all three of them focus on creating more of the COVID-19 spike protein, um, which is the protein on the outside of the virus cell that attaches to our body, uh, attaches to our cells, enters them in order to infect us. So the, my, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine use mRNA to induce your body to create more of this protein. We've talked about that in the past. Uh, and then your immune system learns to recognize it. Uh, but the J&J &J vaccine uses an adenovirus vector to deliver DNA. Um, and that DNA also creates more of that spike protein. Uh, so your vaccine learns, so, sorry, so your body learns to recognize that spike protein. The, the good thing about DNA is it's much more stable than the mRNA. So that's what we uh, spoke about that it, it doesn't require, it just, it only requires regular refrigeration rather than that deep, uh, deep refrigeration. Uh, and so, and the other thing is the medical community has a bit more experience using these adenovirus vectors. Um, it's the same thing that's been used in the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine that were, you know, might be approved soon. And also J&J's Ebola vaccine. And with all these vaccines, that means progress. But the CDC recently expressed concern about the reopenings that we're seeing and said the variants could wipe out our progress. Do you, do you think we're moving too fast? Yeah, this is, this is a delicate issue. A lot of people are weighing in. Um, it's been a year since the first shutdowns. We're all kind of feeling a bit antsy uh, just given that. But, and we've made tremendous progress with these vaccinations. We've seen the numbers drop. Uh, but we've also seen these variants coming in. Um, and we're, we're really, frankly, not sure at this point what that's going to look like. 
So deliberate, uh, slow reopening where we can see what's happening and, and give uh, society time to see what that, whether there's gonna be an uptick, I think is gonna be really important. Uh, so use caution, stay vigilant, follow CDC guidelines, get vaccinated when it's your turn. Uh, this is our best chance of getting back to some normalcy before the end of the year. Yeah, and we're all waiting for that day. Dr. Stacy Villinger with Stanford Healthcare. Thank you. Thank you so much.